First of all, when a man has healthy levels of testosterone, it pushes his cortisol levels down. Any, as men age, and this is now scientifically proven statistically, at the age around 33 to 35, men's testosterone levels start dropping a few percent every year, every year, every year, every year. And as it drops, his, his baseline cortisol level goes higher and higher and higher. Hence, you'll see for a lot of men, the belly fat just sort of gradually gets bigger and bigger and bigger. They're not changing their lifestyle at all, but the belly fat just increases a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Nothing you can do about it. And that's one of the symptoms. There could be other symptoms of low testosterone, high cortisol. Now, what about, so what men need to do, how do they rebuild testosterone? They rest. If you rest or just sit and have recreation, recovery time, recreation, anything which is relaxing and fun, actually increases your testosterone levels if you just exhausted them. You have to exhaust them first and then rest works. You can't just rest all the time. <laughs> you have to exhaust and then you come back to rest. And in rest you recover and you get stronger. Kind of like when you break a bone, when it grows back, it's stronger. If it grows back, it heals. So every day men exhaust, they do their best. Like as one poet said, you know, just give me an opportunity to serve the world and use every little drop of me that I'm completely spent and now I feel my life is satisfied. That is what I live for. Although in this tour I spent, <laughs> my wife says, you really overspent, John. I got home and I remember one day I was just like a noodle on the couch. I had no energy in my body at all. And, and what, what's happening is that's total recovery time, the body rebuilding its energy. So men have to have that rest. So what's the difference between men and women? First of all, this is amazing. Testosterone doesn't lower stress for women. So let's say you're a woman who's really become like a man, which is happening more and more. You're accomplishing, you're achieving, you're the head of a department, you're in control of various things, there's a lot of pressure on you, there's a sense of urgency, there's a sense of emergency, and there's a sense of competition. When a woman is in that situation, it stimulates testosterone. When a man is in that situation, it stimulates testosterone. The difference between a man and a woman is that testosterone is enormously beneficial to him and necessary. But to a woman, it serves very little, very little purpose. She doesn't need that extra testosterone. It does not lower her cortisol levels. And if it gets too high, it actually raises her cortisol levels. So what is it that lowers cortisol for women if testosterone doesn't do it? And I think you're getting the drift. Remember I said we've got a big problem here, and I'll get to the solution. But as I'm talking about the problem, you're already, some of you are already thinking, is he saying women shouldn't be in the workplace? No, not saying that at all. But you've got to understand why women today are more unhappy than ever before, why the new stats that are just coming out showing that women no longer living seven years longer than men. Used to be women live longer than men. Now it's about equal, and it's going down. More heart disease, more breast cancer, more deaths than women sooner than men. What's going on? I mean, just in India, they did a study of women who live in a village. The percent of breast cancer is 3%. Women who live in the city, as soon as they're in Bombay, they move to Bombay, they get their job, they're now independent, free from those dominant awful men. They're doing their own thing. And they're now in a category of 70% of women get breast cancer. 70%. This is massive. And of course, what, if you've been to Bombay, you know that it's an urgency, emergency all the time. And you're out there having to defend yourself. I'm not saying women can't live in Bombay and be happy. I'm going to teach you tonight how to live in Bombay or the jungle and be happy. And lower your stress levels. But women don't know how to do this. This is a whole reversal. This is a new problem that's never happened in the world before. Really, this is all completely new. I've traveled around the world. 28 times, I study health habits of people in indigenous cultures. I also study relationship habits and interactions, just to kind of see how people were before we've been conditioned to be a different way. The irony is that often feminists think that men are conditioned to be like men. And really, it's our society's conditioning women to be like men. And then women are so missing their femininity that then they want men to become like women. And I'll tell you, I write about this in my book, my own experience of helping men become more like women which is open up, share your feelings, all sensitive like that. 
Then after two months, the women come to me, and this is real, until I change my ways. The women would say, all my women were coming to me and saying, you know, before we got married, I didn't realize he had so many problems. <laughs> turned on to him anymore. And she was the one who was begging to hear about all his problems. I just did an interview with an Argentina radio uh, uh, magazine, and we're talking about romance, and she says, yes, we just, we wish every man could be like you. And what would that, I said, what would that look like? And he said, oh, you'd come home and you'd share the deep, dark secrets of your life and the problems and the feelings and your emotions. I go, I never do that. <laughs> you have some fantasy of what romance is. When men do that, women will lose attraction to men. What women are looking for, they don't always know what they're looking for. They sense when they're not feeling safe within themselves to cope with the stress by, we'll learn, one of the ways to cope with stress for women is to produce another hormone other than testosterone. And that hormone is oxytocin. Oxytocin and testosterone are like this and this. Now I know everything we've learned before that estrogen and testosterone, estrogen is the female tonal hormone, testosterone is the male. Now we're learning that while estrogen plays all these important roles in a woman's body, oxytocin is the hormone that lowers a woman's stress level. She can have plenty of estrogen and it doesn't do anything to lower her stress levels if she doesn't have oxytocin. And oxytocin is not a pill, it's not a food, it's when a woman does a particular behavior. When a woman does a behavior which stimulates, which is nurturing to others, or nurturing to herself, either one. When she's in nurturing behaviors, her oxytocin levels go up. But just as men need to work hard and then have recovery time, women have a cycle. They have to nurture others and then have recovery time for them where someone nurtures them. <coughs> and the way you get someone to nurture you, women have never learned this because they never needed men for nurturing. Women worked in the garden with other women. And when they're with other women, they have their whole customs, they have their rules. Like one of the rules I notice with my daughters and my wife is if one woman speaks for a while, then the other one has to listen for a while. If you, I'm a woman here for a moment, if I share with you, then I then have to say, now tell me about your life. And if I don't reciprocate, I share, and then I don't ask you about questions in your life, you'll see me as selfish, right? The self-absorbed. My daughters complain about their friends, or their old friends, are no longer friends all the time. I hear this, because it was so unusual for me to hear this. But they say things like, oh, she called me and she talked for like 15 minutes. She never asked me a question about my life at all. I just feel used. I'm not going to talk to her next time. Now, what guy would have that reaction? 